What's going on everybody? C4 here. Welcome back. Episode 4 of our NCAA 14 Miami Tech Dynasty. As you remember, this is a four-part episode. These episodes are breaking into four weeks at a time. And we're up this first week of four, week nine, against the two and four Florida Atlantic Owls. Always a big matchup here, especially in year one of establishing this program. Anytime we go up against a fellow Florida school. We like to start the episodes with looking at recruiting. We finish with the recruiting. We currently have 24 targets of our 25 potential scholarship opportunities. Uh, you know, if you've been following the series, you're familiar with a lot of these names. No new names on the board. However, we are falling behind here for the quarterback prospect, Joel Thomas. LSU has taken the lead, so we've bumped it up to 500 points. Uh, but I mean, it's, it's more so you just kind of want to get a quarterback in the class. We don't need one. Our, our quarterback right now, he's only a sophomore. We, you know... It would just be more so nice getting one. We got our running backs here all on board. Uh, no changes to our wide receivers. It looks good. Tight end looks good. Offensive line looks pretty damn good. We actually retook the lead for 76 overall tackle Jordan Young out of South Carolina. Uh, it's really coming down to between us and West Virginia. Uh, we're, we're falling a little behind here on the guard. Greg Harris behind Ole Miss, but we bumped it up. He's only at like 200 points before. So knocking that to 475, I expect us to regain that lead sooner than later. Two interior offensive linemen would be huge for us to beat out Florida State here for Doug Carter. Um, I mean, we already beat Florida State, so I don't know why. Were you not at that game? But uh, that's going to be a huge one there because, I mean, that guy there is one of the best interior offensive linemen in this entire draft class. Defensive line looks pretty good. Uh, we got, we're you know, first place lead position for all our guys. But no one really outrageous is high 60s. But we can figure where our team really is at. High 60s. Anything that's like 65 plus is going to be a welcome addition to our team. Jeremy Johnson, that's going to be a tough one not to land. We are you know, firmly behind Notre Dame at this point in time, but we're not going to give up. We're going to keep on keeping on. Hopefully, once he makes a visit, uh, you know, he'll, he'll change his mind. He'll sway his opinion. This is a big one here. Jamal Rishwalski, 75 corner. Looks like we're going to be able to land him. He's That's unreal. He's going to be a day one starter. Maybe the best guy in our secondary day one as a true freshman. Uh, we're kind of in here on two safeties. I think it's about time we actually get off Brett Wright. He came for a visit. We spent a lot of time on him. But Williamson is like the same overall and you know, already a lot more interested in coming to Miami. Leaving Oklahoma. Oklahoma's boring. You might as well leave that. We have no special teamers. And our athlete here in Martin Washington, we've been spending a lot of time on him. But we've been lowballing him. We've been in the lead for quite some time. Then Boise State came to nowhere. So he bumped his recruiting points back up to 500. So I think it's fairly easy to decide what game we're actually going to get our hands on and get in and play. It's the Battle of Florida, and this is like one of those matchups we definitely want to be able to win. Florida Atlantic has some interesting players. I mean, those are our own big three, Wilkerson, Rich, and McQueen. But they have Harrison Bryant, who's literally, in real life, he won like the best tight end in college football award. Uh, they got uh, Pierre here, who's also actually declared three interceptions on the season. They're a really solid team. It's not going to be a pushover. Look, defensively, they're like 28th in the country with 19 points allowed. So it's going to be tough to tough to score on them, but it should be, we should be up to the task, at least defensively. Uh, it's going to be a good game, though. And uh, let's get in and go to 6-2 and two on the season. Oh, we got the tight end deep, and it is. Oh, that probably should have been intercepted. Terribly underthrown ball. Awful start to the game. Oh, come on, man. Missed tackles. Tackle them into the end zone. I mean, we can't lose this one. They got Lane Kiffin on the other sideline. You know he's going to hold this over the recruits if they beat us. He's like, that's just the kind of guy that he is. And that is terrible tackling from Lou McQueen. One of our key players. One of our star players on defense. That was horrific for him. Oh, TC Rich. The play action pass. They've been on it 48 yards. Finally, an explosive play downfield by, you know, just judging how we played on that opening drive defensively. This is going to be a game that we have to outscore them. John Madden logic, but it's not going to be a game that we could just get field goals here and there. We're going to have to continually keep getting touchdowns, pilot it up because our defense is not going to be able to bail us out. Let's go, let's go QB scrambling. Julius Irvin, 11 yards to the house. Great blocking downfield. All the skill position players being selfless. Blocking for your quarterback. Look at this. Look at these blocks. Look at all. Zero blocks. <laughs> that happened. 
Let's just full credit to a great athlete making a great athletic play. Again, John Madden analysis. Oh, it's going to be a big stand. Watch 40. For the love of God, what, the QB keeper, and we can't even tackle like a 200-pound pound quarterback. He still falls forward into the end zone. Another deficit for our offense to try to dig out. Oh, come on. We got baited. Just throw it like an inch higher. If you throw that an inch higher, that, and then there, there's some cheese. Like, we can barely tackle him. Ah! You gotta get home. Gotta get home on the blitz. It's a it's a blitz, and we had no penetration through the A-gap. Uh, <laughs> ah! So frustrating. Come on. It's a third and 19. Third and... If we can't stop him here, we're not gonna stop him. They're going to screen... Booker reads it and still in an imbi Oh, there we go. I like that tackle out of bounds. <laughs> they got BJ Evans. That guy was like a four or five star recruit. See, like Florida Atlantic, like how Florida Atlantic, they're getting some of these five stars, getting those castaways. They got all the last chance you players. Like that's kind of how we need to start recruiting this offseason. Uh, but all right, got to get a big hole to dig ourselves out of 24-7. They've really taken away the run today. Like, we love to feed Ramon Bostic. It's kind of what, it's kind of our offense. We are a run first team with a running quarterback. And you could tell, Florida Lady's game plan right out the rip was take away the run. And that makes we don't got play action. We can't even utilize Bostic, who's been our best player. But then we got to be able to go to find guys like TC Rich, who's having a hot one right now. He's eating some hot wings, answering difficult questions. He's on hot ones. Here we go. North cut. Through the slot. Peter North cut. Dropping loads. All right. It's fourth and six. We're in the red zone. This has been rare territory for us here today. So we're going to go for it. We got TC Rich, our number one receiver. That's going to be our target. We don't have to get a touchdown. Just a first down. And we get sacked right off the play. Didn't have a chance at any play. It's going to be one of them kind of games. Oh! Peter North cut. Oh, he's not fast at all, but gets the big gainer after the defense got to stand there, forcing a punt. That was huge. I thought for sure he wasn't he wasn't going to hit that. But then again, you know, at the end of the day, when you have wide receivers that have like 82 speed, they're going to get caught from behind like that. Northcutt is unstoppable. I come real stealth because Bostic makes one-handed catches, even though his catching is like 30. Hell yeah. This game has been turned on its head. Everything to play for in the second half. No! Oh! Ah! Oh! Why? No, no, no. That, that foot was on the white. That foot was on the white. That was not a completed interception this. You can see it. And one foot on the white. How do I challenge this? It's going to be automatically reviewed? No. Nope. Get that red flag out. I am. How do I do this? Strategy. Is it in here? Coach's challenge. That was not an inbounds interception. Yes, it's reversed. Oh, it's, that's not in Madden. Wait, what? How's it reversed, but I don't have the ball? Okay. Maybe it is like Madden. Oh, do we, uh, I mean, he's the best guy on either team. He's the best player on the field. Harrison Bryant slants cheese. Go, Urban. Got some wheels on you, kid. Got some wheels on you, kid. We're going to go for it. We're playing for pride at this point. Just want to make it look a little less uh, manageable. We got Northcutt as our primary read in the slot. That's where we're going to want to try and feed this one to as he gets wide open. That's a great route. Again, breakout game. He's just blasting all over these DBs. Yeah, it's just we'll just we'll just sim this one out now. I mean, this is what's 
We're not in a good spot here. Look, I don't even think we're going to be able to do anything with the Sim. So, yeah, we drop uh, drop a 50 bomb here against us, Florida Atlantic. We're just going to two-point conversion here to try to make it look a little less... Not, not bad, but it's... Oh, and he gets... Ah, uh, there we go. Not only did we not get it, our quarterback got lit up. Perfect. Yeah, let's just get out of this one. Hopefully, we're injury-free, but that is... That is a, uh, you know, we're five and three, and just as things start to get a little, you know, man, this team's really, really good. We, we have a reality check. This is a reality check game against a somewhat established Florida Atlantic. I mean, it's a Florida Atlantic team. They get like six, seven wins every year. They're competitive, and it really just kind of shows where we're at right now, year one, as a brand new school. Trying to bounce back here in game two of the episode. It's a battle of the two five and two teams. Or well, actually, we were five and two. Now we're five win teams. UTEP, if you've ever followed me on Twitter, you know my personal feelings with UTEP. But we have upgrades for every one of our coaches from the head coach, Mr. Tom Savage, where we're going to continue to pound in recruiting. I want more points. We unlock the final skill tree, so that's going to be a big get. You look at Pac-Man Jones as we continue to develop in the secondary we want his coverage stats to go up. Uh, you know, that's his background. He's a DB by trade. So that's that's kind of how I want to try to build up both of these coaches' uh, these skill trees is make them by what kind of player they are. So Pac-Man Jones, win in, when I can anyways, I'm going to upgrade something that would be a coverage-based. Same thing when it goes to P.L. Mullins. I'm going to be looking for something that is uh, running-based. So uh, we got right here, big time for daylight, make it three out of three. And our coaching stats, man, already level six. Across the board, and Tom Savage, level 10, it's coming along very nicely. Now, let's get into that game against UTEP. So, looking at UTEP, across, they're not bad across the board. A pretty good pass defense, too, number 10. Looking at us, I mean, we can flex a little bit offensively. We're third in passing yards, and we're first in run defense, which is good usually, but looking at UTEP's top players, they're, they're star running back star, but their best player, the running back, is out for this game. So you figure, I don't know, is that going to go against us because we are built to stop against the run? But this is going to be, uh, we're going to have to rely on the Sim here to come out and come through and uh, get us our sixth win of the season. Uh, right now, because we have no divisional games, we pretty much just want to try to get a bowl. We want to become bowl eligible. So uh, let's get through quarter by quarter at this game. So we're starting off here in the first quarter. I mean, we have seen in the Sim our team struggle against FCS teams, so I'm a little bit worried. Uh, but we did see Peter Northcutt get a touchdown. I mean, this guy here is breaking out. This episode, Peter Northcutt, he's just busting all over, folks. No matter how many puns you can squeeze in, Northcutt has been playing very, very well. And it's great to have another wide receiving option emerge. That is not TC Rich. But we are trailing by seven at halftime against UTEP, who's probably, you know, they're punching above their weight class this season. Five wins for UTEP is pretty damn impressive. But uh, we tied up here 24 apiece. Going into the fourth quarter, we forced a punt. Let's go. Come on. Come on, T. Put this one away. And we had a punt. Our defense is actually playing pretty good. Go ahead, Tutty. 34-24, 10-point lead. It ends up being a three-point victory for Miami Tech here over UTEP. Finally, we get a win in the sim. Looking at the, uh, the box score here, Julius Irvin. 294 yards on 41 passing attempts, two touchdowns, one interception. The completion percentage is about where it should be for him. Nothing too outrageous. We got the run game going. Look how many rushing attempts that was. Almost 50 running attempts. Irvin had 36 and a tutty. Bostic, 32 touches, 146 yards. See, that's pretty much what killed us against Florida Atlantic. We could not run the ball whatsoever. He broke 21 tackles. That is ridiculous. Uh, receiving yards across the board, pretty good. Rich had a touchdown. Northcutt had a touchdown. Not a lot of yards went their way. 14 tackles for Vasher. We had no interceptions. We got a sack from Dwayne East. But that is a big bounce back victory for Miami Tech. Let's get into next week. Game three, huge step up in competition here against Pitt. They're like an 85 overall team. I don't know if we'd actually see... Uh, the, the base overall, but they are they are really, really, really good. They're disappointing with that 2-5 and five record, 0-6 oh in the ACC, but they get Jalen Twyman, who is unreal, man, like a baby Aaron Donald. Jimmy Morrissey, he's like an all-pro, all-American center. 
really, really good. And Demar Hamlin, like all three of these guys. There, this is a team that, in comparison to the teams we have been facing, probably the most NFL caliber talent across the board. So it's going to be a you know, really, really big upset if we're able to find a way to win this one against the Pitt Panthers. I'm saying it's, it's almost really when you, we looked at our schedule, we had Florida State. Florida State and Pitt were probably the big two matchups this season in terms of like, all right, let's see kind of where we're at. I mean, Pitt, you know, they're not a known powerhouse, but they're a team that's always uh, around that bowl eligible kind of range. They send two, three guys to the NFL every year. Really, really well-ran program. So this is going to be one hell of a game. We're going to have to put in a shift. I think it's going to be very difficult to control the line of scrimmage. Very difficult to run the ball. But we're tying this one up at seven apiece in the first quarter. Down seven. However, uh, Kenny Pickett throwing the ball fairly well against our defense. And yeah, man, this is just, it's just one of those things, man. When you're a small school, the line of scrimmage, it's, it's like the big, how do you think Alabama? is so dominant time in time out. They, they have the best offensive line best defensive line they're always better athletes and i, I feel like that's kind of what this game is going to be um for a team like us miami tech that's designed to have a nice balance to be able to run the ball you know we're not going to see that we are not going to see that here today and look at that we're just you know we, you know we didn't get blown out but we, we kept on keeping on. We, we fought. We didn't go we didn't go down without swinging. 42-21, however, Pitt was able to knock off Miami Tech. Our second loss of the episode. Florida Atlantic first. Now Pittsburgh. Irvin, 294 yards, a touchdown, two interceptions, 37 completion percentage. That is that is not great. Bostic actually didn't play too bad. 76 yards, two touchdowns on the day. Receiving. T.C. Rich relying on your good players. Seven catches, 126 yards, and a touchdown defensively. Uh, we go Dwayne East, man. He's been playing out really, really well in the sim. Two TFLs, two sacks. We got three TFLs and a sack from Quincy Cannon. An interception from DeMarcus Singleton, but just not enough plays on the offense went our way. We couldn't get stands when we needed to defensively, and uh, we fall to Pittsburgh here, 42-21. But at least to wrap up the episode, we have a game against an FCS team, which should be at least a win to end it on a high note. So we're ready for the final game of the episode. This is where we got to, you know, give our final little recap of these last four weeks. What has gone on with our scouting? Our board is, you know, continue to settle in, at least for the guys that look like they're going to be locks. We, we don't have to deviate a lot of points towards them. Um, I would say Tremblay, we've lost the lead to Georgia Tech. That's, that's kind of uh, what we're dealing with. West Virginia still hanging there. Yeah, we probably actually can get rid of Harris. It frees up 400 more points spent elsewhere. We lost the lead on James Berg. I mean, it's a 70 overall D end. But, you know, it'll still be annoying with the U. Um, we're pulling ahead on a lot of these players. I feel confident. Maybe Coleman, we can give him a couple more points here because Army is getting kind of close. It's so weird. I feel like a lot of these things are real unrealistic because like a lot of like Army showing up, Navy, like military academies. Aren't those guys going to go there regardless? Like it doesn't have anything to do with recruiting. Like it's like a, you know, I don't know. It is what it is. But our teams uh, generally, you know, we're holding first spot on a lot of our main targets. And we have a new guy that we have been able to add to the board as we've lost officially Joel Thomas, our quarterback that wasn't really that important. We lost... Center Desi Davis, which is annoying because he was looking like a really good player. We lost one of our linebackers to Notre Dame. But we found this guy, diamond in the rough, Ishmael Rogers. Uh, we scouted him. We were number two, came out as a diamond, plus six. So I was like, all right, you know, maybe there's going to be some redeeming qualities to losing some of these players. And we found him. We're trying to improve our draft board. Right now it's between us and North Carolina. Mac Brown up there trying to turn that program around. But I, I think we're going to have enough. So we'll spend the rest of these points on just some of these lower tier prospects. And we'll get into the final game against an FCS competition. And hopefully end this one with a dub. And in our final game of the episode, we're going up against the FCS Howlers. And we're hoping that they have a howler of a performance here today. So in the first quarter, I mean, these, are, these haven't been gimmies for us. We have not been blowing past these FCS schools. So I'm hoping that uh, we could continue to find a way to win i don't care if it's pretty i don't care if it's ugly just give me a dub so it's seven nothing right now ten nothing in the first half again we're struggling to, to get that get the end result here 17 nothing though at half i feel comfortable that we that we should be able to uh get a dub here 
But you never know. They always throw a wrench into things. A lot of, uh, you know, a lot of uninspiring play. I'd love to see a couple deep bombs here. Why is everything a grindy drive? Where's, like, the big 60, 70-yard touchdown that I've been looking for here? But Boston controlling the clock. We're running the ball, and we get through an FCS team. We got an upgrade for Tom Savage, but a 26 to 13 win. Not pretty. I mean, we'll just act like we played like a North Dakota State or a South Dakota State or something like that. Player stats Julius Irvin, 250 yards on the day after 46 attempts, one touchdown, no reception. 36% completion percentage against an FCS team. That is horrible. Running the ball, Bostic went off 137 yards, had a touchdown as well. On the receiving standpoint, Carlson, five catches, 86 yards, and a tutty. Defensively, we got some TFLs lived in the backfield here. Wilkerson, big time performance from our big time D tackle. Three TFLs, two sacks, two sacks from Cannon, a sack from Delance Bradley. Uh, no interceptions, didn't really make him work for it in the secondary, but a win is a win, and we will take that against. You know, you pretty much have to guarantee these FCS victories. So, two and two on the episode. So, that is how we're going to wrap up episode number four here for the Miami Tech. Vice, um, you know, you look here at the, uh, where's our, where's a little, what are we looking for? Conference standings. Even though we have no conference play, as it stands, seven and four, we'd be right in the mix in the American. UCF's eight and two. Cincinnati is eight and one. Looking at the American in general, let's just look at the win loss. Well, let me search. Okay, either way, since, you know, we, we'd be the number one team. We're the number one team, and you see some big-name schools that, I mean, relatively big name, but SMU's only 5-4, and four, Tulane 6-3, and three, Memphis 4-5, and five, Houston 6-3. and three. So, I mean, it's, it's just, it just stinks that we have no conference games this year. We couldn't schedule them in. Maybe that's, like I said, I, I feel like that was a, a ploy, if you will, from the, uh, the rest of the ADs and everything else. They didn't want this brand new school coming in and having a chance to win right away. They're going to make it pretty much sit a year. Um, but let's see what we got here. We got 50 points assigned each week. We get 15 on the offseason, 1%. Okay, let's do uh, each week. Let's get kitchen sink here at it for Tom Savage. But again, I mean, if you're you know trying to get back in NCAA, always, always, always prioritize recruiting as your main skill tree for your head coach. But, you know, we're 7-4. and four. Looking at this, the next episode, episode five, would pretty much just be an offseason. We still have one game against Georgia Tech. Uh, we're not going to make the conference championship. We hopefully will have a bowl game, eight and four, seven and five. We should be on the cusp of a potential bowl game, but uh, most likely, episode five, next episode, will be that final game against Georgia Tech, and then pretty much just getting ready for the second season of Miami Vice. But thank you guys for tuning into another episode. As always, if it's your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed and you like seeing NCAA content on the channel. And until next time, it's C4 saying peace out. Money I'm spending, I'm out and I'm shopping. You talking that shit when you talking and talking. Look at my options, look at me dropping. I send the game like, who are you stopping? Not me, not me, not never. Not me, not me, not never. Not me, not me, not never. I'm way too clever. Look at the kid.